this also had come up again recently with several people asking about it. And we, you can go out to our YouTube channel and Boyd has um, some uh, tidbits already that pulled out from other webinars and some other webinars that we've done that we've talked about this. Uh, but uh, they had asked, a couple people had asked, can you give me more information about working remotely? It seems like everybody wants to work remotely in medical coding, but I feel skeptical about starting a career without the full picture. And that was what caught my interest. Kudos for, for saying that because um, it's not all that it's cracked up to be always. Now, everybody that works at CCO works remote uh, if you're working for CCO, but some of the people that work with us have other jobs that, that they do as well, and um, that and some of the, them work remote with the other jobs, and some of them actually work in a, a facility or a location or a school, and all of the CCO people um, have done both at one time or another. So I think that we have the ability to give you a, the reality of what it, what it is. And what happens is you see people advertising either their education or um, mostly education, <laughs> uh, come and get trained with us, work from home, uh, you know, study and in four months you could be working from home making $60,000 a year. And that's just not reality. Uh, and the full picture is, yes, you could get trained in four months. That that can be done. Uh, you know, that's, uh, and especially if you have a medical background, you know, uh, there's lots of ways to get your education. Of course, we do education full time, but um, some people go to a brick and mortar school. Some people get uh, their training through in, uh, with a degree uh, program. Other people uh, get online training and uh, some go to community colleges, some, you know, there's just several ways that, that the training can be done. But on average, if you're just learning to, to code, four months is, a, is reality, you could do that. However, you're not gonna start out making $60,000 a year. You will get paid well, you know, usually, but you also don't just walk in and get a job right away. You know, you have to put time in and, Every year that you work in this industry, you tend to make more money. Now, you may not make more money in the job that you have, but if you go from one job to another, all of that experience, that time that's under your belt, ends up meaning that you're probably going to, you know, um, have more in your uh, pocket when you go to another job. The turnover is not very high with this career because it's a fun job to do and it pays well and uh, and you can have a lifestyle that uh, where you could work from home or uh, it's not physically demanding. So there's a lot of people that have physical disabilities or uh, uh, injuries or health conditions that need them to have that sedentary type job. That all being said, the reality of working remote, and it's becoming more and more um, frequent that these jobs are going remote because as of like 2016, I think it was, uh, medical records needed to become electronic. So now that we don't have to look at paper as much, it's easier to communicate back and forth. So it, it is much more of a reality to get those jobs, but you don't always just graduate and get a remote job and you may not want one. So the reality is the hours, um, you still have to work a 40 hour work week. And you have to keep in mind that if you're working from home and you're working 40 hours, yes, you could split your time up and say work, you know, I'm gonna work um, four hours in the morning and then I'm gonna work four hours in the evening. Well, that's That could be done, you know, you could do that. Or um, some people say, I don't wanna work Monday and Tuesday, I wanna work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you know, I wanna, wake, I wanna work my five days 
in, that include the weekend. And some employers don't care if you do that. Um, I've worked remote if the jobs that wanted you to work Monday through Friday, nine to five, because that's when everybody else that worked in the office was there and we communicated back and forth. Uh, however, it, it just depends. The pay is tends to be a little higher when you work remote. Uh, that is because that it when you work in a specific area, your pay is based on your geographic area. So if there's several hospitals in the area that you live, then you're going to get paid more than if you work for um, a hospital system that's, you know, an hour away from the rural town that you live in, right? Uh, it, you know, if there is if there's a university or whatever you're living in, people that live in the city make more money put it that way, than rural people. Not always. Uh, it isn't like, so it's not so much supply and demand, I guess. But the other thing you have to consider that often people overlook is that you may not be actually an employee. You may be taking on contract work. And so if you're working through a recruiter, you want to find out from them, and I encourage you to get a recruiter if you're thinking of working remote, um, is, you know, are, am I being hired as contract work or is this, is am I an employee? And the big thing is, are they going to take out taxes? That's what you want to know. Because the first year that I worked remote, oh, I was really excited. I was making really, really good money. But when I went to do my taxes, that was, that was, uh, very, I, I was aware of it and I planned for it, but I wasn't a, a aware of the sticker shock I was going to get. So luckily I had kept track of all kinds of receipts and stuff like that and done my research ahead of time. So again, taxes can be um, something you may not think about until it's too late. Uh, also, some companies pay you by the hour and some pay you by the encounter that you do. Now, if you get paid by the hour, then, and a lot of times they don't care where you put your hours in as long as you give them 40 hours, and that means that they'll have a, um, they'll have a quota. So in risk adjustment, it's like 5.5 .5, um, charts an hour, but in um, pro fee coding, or especially it could be 30 um, encounters an hour, right? Uh, it, it didn't used to be that many, but now everything's electronic and you don't have to read handwriting and so on and so forth. So it's, it goes a lot faster. Plus your providers log in codes now and they never used to do that. You'd have to look at them up from scratch before, uh, but most of them have already got it in the EMR. Um, if you work via Encounter, if you're really new to an area, then say you're going to start doing cardiology and you haven't done cardiology before, then you got a little leeway that, well, you're just not going to make as, they're not going to have to pay you if you can't keep up to speed and then you get to, you make more money the, the faster you are, right? Um, and you can make really good money if you're fast. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, owning your own equipment. Now, the last remote job I did, they gave me a desktop computer and they gave me two external monitors to use. They weren't mine. Uh, everything came, they even gave me a phone, like the company phone that you'd keep on your desk. And you could dial in <laughs> and literally, you know, or you could just hit an extension and even though they were in a different state, we could talk. Um, however, when I was no longer doing that, all that got boxed up and sent back to them because it was their equipment. That means you have to have a place that, to keep that equipment and you have to keep, it doesn't belong to you. You gotta keep it clean. Uh, you gotta keep your children away from it. It isn't something that you're gonna look up and play, um, what's that thing they play on fake? Candy Crush, you can't play on Candy Crush, <laughs> stuff like that. You can't watch a, a video on YouTube. Uh, often it has a VPN associated with it. So you gotta make sure your internet can handle a VPN. Satellites don't work real well with VPN. So that's important to know. Or you could be using your own equipment and logging in to a uh, specific site where everything's tracked. But that means that you are 
are uh, in charge of making sure that nobody else has access or viruses and stuff like that can get access to that. Children in the house is a reality. So um, you have to remember that you cannot keep, you have to keep regular office hours for yourself. Maybe your employer wants you to, but you know, that means if you have a sick child, then yeah, you can check on them, but you're you're gonna have to have somebody else come and take care of them. You are not gonna work remote from home to save uh, a fee on babysitters, put it that way. And you can't have your um, office in the kitchen. If you need a designated office space because the equipment is expensive, it may not belong to you, and um, you do want extra monitors and stuff. Soft skills is something that I know some people that are not extroverts like me, they're introverts, may not, um, just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you don't have soft skills, but uh, soft skills are still looked at even if you work remote. There are times where you have to communicate with the provider, even on the phone. You may not be in the same state, but you have to call them up. You may have to do video conferencing. You may have to uh, send emails and you need to be professional, right? And so those soft skills come across. Uh, as much as you uh, say that you want to be able to work in your pajamas every day, um, yes, you you could. But um, you know, after a while, in my opinion, it affects your performance. So you need you may not have to go put a face on, but you still need to brush your hair, brush your teeth, and get dressed. <laughs> you know, because it comes across when you talk on the phone, uh, when you type. It's a mentality thing. So uh, always know that soft skills still have to continually be worked on. And that's my tidbits uh, over the reality, just things that now you can go do your own research, uh, research. You need to definitely talk to people that are working remote and ask them the pros and cons. Say, be upfront with me, what's the pros and cons? It is a lot of fun though. I can't imagine myself going back to a desk at somebody else's office. need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.